Obviously, we think that we are uh, living through a truly historic moment in time in terms of our modern history. Um, uh, Expo is the event of the year, we think uh, not only for us, but hopefully for the whole world. Uh, and it is indeed so, 115 countries are here, uh, from uh, the United States and uh, uh, Germany and Spain and France, to St. Kitts and Nevis, and, and many, many other small island nations, mm -hmm. which we are glad about. Uh, and 22 international organizations are also present at Expo. So indeed, we hope that this uh, event uh, contributes to the global uh, development, of course, beginning with the contribution to the global debate about uh, um, sustainable, sustainable uh, uses of uh, energy and about using the alternative sources of energy so that we do not contribute uh, uh, anymore to the global warming. Uh, we are, of course, uh, happy that uh, 17 heads of state and government uh, were in Astana for the launch of Expo. Mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, scheduling the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit just before the launch of Expo helped, but it was done on purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, throughout, actually, Expo, we will have uh, numerous other events which will be also very uh, large scale and high profile. We will have the Astana Economic Forum uh, on the 15th and 16th of June this week. And then we will have, and that's a t that's a, 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 an event which attracts about uh, 10,000 people annually. Then the Eurasia Media Forum, which typically takes place in uh, April, was also moved to June. Mm -hmm. It will take place June 22nd, June 23rd. That's an event of about uh, six for about 600 people, mostly political politicians, uh, mm -hmm. pundits, experts, and the media. And they discuss, uh, but they discuss not only media-related uh, issues, but they discuss topical issues of the day and how they are reflected in the media. For example, the war in Syria, or the uh, uh, the the uh, the future of the information society, things like this. Then uh, we will have also uh, numerous visits at the level of heads of state and government throughout mm -hmm. the Expo with the presidents uh, uh, and the prime ministers coming for the launch of their pavilions on their national days, their so-called national days. We have about, mm -hmm. I think we will have about 70 national days throughout, Seven zero. Seven zero throughout mm -hmm. the 93 days of Expo. Mm -hmm. Already some took place such as Turkmenistan and, uh, and the United Arab Emirates. Mm -hmm. uh, but we will have uh, leaders from uh, Germany, from uh, Poland, from uh, uh, quite a few other countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, Expo will complete with uh, at the, at the beginning of September, on the 10th of September. And it's on exactly those at exactly that time we will have the first ever summit, um, Science and Technology Summit of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Oh, I see. Uh, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, uh, actually it was renamed uh, at a ministerial here in Astana uh, in 2011. Islamic conference. It was, yes, yeah. uh, for 30 years, before 40 years before that it was Organization of Islamic yeah. Conference, mostly focusing on the issue of Palestine. Yeah. But uh, we've uh, changed that organization, and not only the name, but the, the essence. And now we are expecting the heads of state and government of from 57 Muslim majority states throughout the world for that summit. So, uh, uh, major events uh, scheduled, uh, you may. You may have heard the president also announcing that 6,000 cultural events will take place during Expo, uh, ranging from major concerts and uh, exhibitions uh, at the National Museum, at the various uh, uh, locations throughout the city, but also down to uh, regular, uh, you know, more modest events. But, uh, uh, basically, it means that uh, every single day there are dozens of events that take place throughout mm -hmm. Expo and throughout the city. 
So naturally we are excited about that and we hope that uh, this produces the desired effect which is to uh, spread the, the, the knowledge about uh, sustainable energy use and uh, contribute to the exchange of technology that uh, various countries present here at, at Expo. Uh, and I know that uh, it's basically like a Disneyland for, for adults <laughs> over there. That's a good expression. <laughs> yeah, because people like... Uh, yeah. uh, my son went there, he's six, but in, he, he was... Uh, uh, very tired in in two hours because of all the activities that you can have yeah, you sure. can do at the pavilions because so this this teaches not only adults but also young kids about the energy and they they learn from from uh, from childhood so we hope uh, many people come many tourists come uh, this year for example is the year of uh, uh, Chinese tourism in Kazakhstan and the year of Kazakh tourism in China so we have uh, high expectation that the Chinese will be traveling here in, in, in big numbers. Uh, July the 2nd, mm -hmm. Kazakhstan's uh, diplomatic service will turn 25, oh, so we will have some celebration mm -hmm. and I think we can indeed look back uh, with some satisfaction over what we have achieved uh, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a nation uh, on the diplomatic front. Um, I will give you uh, uh, a sort of non paper, but uh, it's mm -hmm. called um, 25 Achievements of Kazakhstan's Diplomacy in 25 Years. Great. Yeah. So, 25 in 25, I will leave this uh, yeah. for all of you after. But the key uh, perhaps achievement that I will highla highlight, I think it's important to highlight, is that first we've managed to preserve obviously the independence of Kazakhstan to establish uh, positive relations with all our neighbors. Mm -hmm. Uh, to uh, contribute to the global uh, uh, peace building efforts uh, through uh, numerous initiatives such as the launch of the Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions mm -hmm. which takes place in Astana every three years mm -hmm. such as the launch of the Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures CICA, C -I -C -A, mm -hmm. uh, which now unites 26 countries and mm -hmm. it's the only, con the only organization outside the United Nations perhaps that brings together Israel and Iran or, uh, uh, well, uh, now uh, until last Friday it was also, also the only other organization other than the United Nations that brings together India and Pakistan now Shanghai Cooperation Organization also does mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, so there are quite a few uh, highlights. Of course, our membership in the United Nations Security Council in 2017-2018 is a, a huge achievement. And um, we are uh, taking that uh, membership very seriously. Uh, we have been entrusted with chairing three uh, committees of the um, United Nations S Security Council, specialized committees, one on uh, Taliban and uh, Al-Qaeda, one on and Taliban, Al-Qaeda and Afghanistan, that's one committee. The other one is on uh, ISIS, uh, Daesh, mm -hmm. uh, terrorism, and the third one is um, on uh, Eritrea and Somalia. Uh, some of the areas we've never done, dealt with uh, as a diplomacy in the past, but now we we, we, we working with other members in the UN Security Council. Our top priority there is to um, draw the attention, the much needed attention of the international community to the region um, of Central Asia and to Afghanistan. We want to uh, have the United Nations Security Council produce uh, a document of uh, some uh, sort of uh, some stature by the time we finish our chairmanship in the UN Security Council mm -hmm. uh, there is a rotating chairmanship every month our turn will be in January 2018 oh, I see. Yeah. and our goal is to have a either a UN Security Council resolution focusing on um, Afghanistan and Central Asia or a chairman's statement on, on this, this same uh, subject and uh, we have never had uh, such a document from the UN Security Council before yeah. and we think uh, focusing on Afghanistan um, especially given uh, the precarious security situation there mm -hmm. is uh, is uh, of uh, paramount importance 
uh, we approach this issue through, through the prism of um, uh, uh, mutually reinforcing security via development. Mm -hmm. So there is a security development nexus. Yeah. And of course, the security depends on development. That's why we, as a country, have spent uh, uh, quite a considerable amount of money on Afghanistan, even though it's not our direct neighbor, but uh, we understand that it, it's a, a country uh, and the situation in that country affects uh, all of us. In what way have you spent the money? Uh, we've, um, uh, uh, first, we've given Afghanistan uh, a lot of uh, humanitarian assistance, mm -hmm. 20 million dollars worth of uh, mostly food assistance, grain, wheat, uh, mm -hmm. flour. Uh, and as well as uh, clothing, uh, and blankets, etc., 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 $20 million worth. But we have also launched in 2009 um, an educational program mm -hmm. where we spent uh, $50 million of our own money on educating 1,000 uh, Afghans in our universities, uh, giving them peaceful professions from... Uh, 15 or...? 50, fi five zero. Five zero. $50 million. Uh, dollars. Um, right now, uh, those Afghans are still studying in Kazan because it's a four-year program or five-year program, but we have already um, 300 uh, uh, people graduating because they mm -hmm. began studying in 2010. Now, uh, already they, uh, the program is in seventh year and we will be probably continuing in the future. So this is an example of how Kazakhstan contributes to our regional uh, peace and stability uh, building efforts. But let me also say um, a few words about uh, Central Asia. Uh, this is a region where uh, we are seeing very positive changes in the mm -hmm. political environment, in the political relations among all member states in recent month and uh, we 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 now seen a revival of uh, this uh, uh, kind of relations uh, uh, that will allow we, we think uh, for a much more effective uh, uh, way to deal with uh, numerous problems we all face such as extremism and uh, threat of uh, religious uh, fundamentalism uh, or the uh, need to um, ensure sustainable use of uh, water resources in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a major issue that will face uh, our countries for, for many decades to come, especially as the populations grow and as the requirements for food production grow, we will have to learn to manage water resources in a more prudent way which will take into account interests of all countries main, mainly uh, i'm talking about the rivers uh, mm -hmm. the two rivers the two largest rivers in central asia the sirdaria and the amudaria and of course uh, the situation in the rlc region mm -hmm. so we we will uh, uh, hopefully see those positive winds of change that are now blowing in Central Asia, uh, produce a very positive uh, framework for, uh, for our common interaction among five countries, uh, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, mm -hmm. Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. What's also interesting is that Kazakhstan uh, now uh, have uh, uh, an understanding with all five Central Asian countries mm -hmm. that we represent their interests at the UN Security Council as well. And uh, uh, that's why we are focusing on the regional problems mm. at the UN Security Council. And also the five countries are now uh, jointly discussing um, uh, approaches to the situation in Afghanistan, which was not the case in the past as well. Mm. Some countries used to prefer just dealing with Afghanistan on a bilateral basis. Now we will have regional approaches. So this is a sort of small introduction. And when do you start that uh, discussing Afghanistan as a regional? When? Yeah. In well, we've we've always pushed for that, but we started discussing this in September last year. Oh, I see. Or, um, now we cannot uh, separate uh, that there was a, 
this, this Shanghai Cooperation mm -hmm. Organization Summit immediately before the Expo was mm -hmm. uh, inaugurated. Mm -hmm. uh, it appears that it was done with some ideas behind and that is to show to the world that the Expo, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization is making use of the Expo to tell the rest of the world that Eurasia does not confine itself only to a few countries. Is that uh, uh, interpretation more or less correct? Um, you can say so indeed, yes, but uh, uh, they are of course um, two different events, but they took place at the same time, the Shanghai Summit and the launch of uh, Expo. Um, I would uh, say that uh, uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization uh, and the participation of all its leaders in the launch of Expo indeed shows that uh, for all of these countries, uh, sustainable energy use is a, is a, is a, is a priority. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why we had here President Xi Jinping or President Vladimir Putin or Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, and, and many others. Um, but I think it's important to always uh, keep in mind what the Shanghai Cooperation Organization is about. It, uh, of course, launched... Yeah, what's it about? Yes, it's, it's launched in uh, 96, 1996 as the Shanghai Five. And uh, these uh, were the countries uh, that uh, border, uh, bordered and border each other. Um, no, they all share a border with China, that's the way to put it. Mm -hmm. So it was China and then four countries in the former Soviet Union, which had uh, uh, and have a common border with China, that's Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. And the idea was to uh, uh, ensure security about this, uh, around this border, because, because that border with all of these countries at that point in 1996 was not settled. Mm. And there was no, even during the Soviet times, uh, Soviet Union times, no uh, border agreement was ever signed between the Soviet Union and the Chinese mm -hmm. People's Republic. Um, so there were large amounts of troops on each side of the border mm -hmm. and under that agreement uh, in 1996 it was uh, uh, possible to uh, agree that uh, uh, troops will be withdrawn to within 100 kilometers of each other's borders which is what has mm -hmm. been done mm -hmm. since that time. So uh, originating as a, a purely security related uh, organization the Shanghai Cooperation Organization soon uh, expanded uh, first with the joining of Uzbekistan in 2001, mm -hmm. turning becoming the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, then uh, uh, expanding into different areas. Uh, so security matters remain the top priority for the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Fighting terrorism, extremism, and separatism are top priorities for for the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. It was not a coincidence that uh, the leaders of ICO adopted the Convention on Fighting Extremism at their summit on, uh, on Friday, yeah. the, the 9th of June. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, it added the dimension immediately in 2001 of economic mm -hmm. cooperation. And, and, and this is where um, a lot of uh, work still remains to be done, mm -hmm. uh, but there is already a business council of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Yes. There are uh, specific uh, uh, agreements within the Shanghai Cooperation Organization on how to develop economic cooperation. And uh, if you consider environment as uh, and sustainable uh, energy use as it's one part of the part of that, yeah. economy, mm -hmm. then of course yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, the third dimension of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which is uh, also significant, is a cultural cooperation. Mm -hmm. it, it does promote a lot of cultural exchanges between all its member states. So mm -hmm. we, uh, we hope that uh, India's and Pakistan's uh, membership in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization will also contribute to the uh, betterment of their bilateral relations. Do you have any thinking along that direction, plans, some kind of thinking, original thinking that you could act as uh, a go-between uh, between India and Pakistan? 
who has I, I'm, well I've yes I understand but I'm not sure if uh, if they need a go between uh, they seem to be working uh, well they seem to be prepared to meet and discuss the differences in their approaches uh, themselves we certainly will uh, continue to uh, contribute in whichever way we can in creating the atmosphere mm -hmm. that will be beneficial for, for, for the improvement of their relations. In what way? Within the Shanghai Cooperation Organization mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are um, basically numerous documents mm -hmm. uh, which are part and parcel of uh, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization so member uh, of the organization uh, needs to respect the the provisions of all those mm -hmm. agreements. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this is a very specific uh, way. There are, yeah. I mean, dozens of documents which will now uh, be considered. Uh, yeah. So, the membership by itself would be an uh, help to promote yes. relations. Yes, that's, the that's the idea. And get rid of tension or minimize the well, tension. Well, that's the idea. Yeah. We've done the same thing within the other organization which I mentioned earlier, yeah. the, the SICA. Yeah. And it was, in fact, in 2002 that, uh, at that point, Prime Minister Vajpayee and... Uh, then Tashkent, yeah. And, no, no, in, in Almaty. And then Prime Minister, um, now, uh, no, President Pervez Musharov, Musharov met in 2002 in Almaty during the first ever SICA summit. And, and that was in the SICA summit, no? It was at SICA in 2002. And again, at that was a time of very... Uh -huh. of very tense relations yes. between these two yeah. countries, so it was significant. No, I was going back to the Soviet days when there was a Tashkent oh, yeah, between Ayub Khan and uh, yeah. Shastri, and one day after the signing declaration, Shastri died. Mm -hmm. So it was a big question what happened to that. Anyway, that's part of history. Yeah. Now, uh, you have extended the Shanghai Economic um, uh, Summit uh, fields also to the area of economic cooperation, that's correct. And uh, now China is a very important member of this. Mm -hmm. uh, organization. Um, do you think uh, the organization could be used or let itself be used to promote OBOR because there is some skepticism in some countries? About what? About the OBOR. Um, For example, India did not go to the summit in Shanghai because India's point of view is that you have to respect sovereignty mm -hmm. and sustainability and part of the route goes through this disputed uh, territory of Kashmir mm -hmm. and that's uh, what the Indian Prime Minister also told uh, President Xi mm -hmm. when they had a little bit of talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, from that perspective I'm asking you. Mm -hmm. And then you not not many Europeans are very keen about that. Japan has of course uh, and uh, there's also some kind of uh, uh, well some doubts uh, what exactly uh, China wants and uh, the criticism of the Uber is that it should be, it should be all inclusive. It should be of a global character and not driven by one country. And in this case, people have the impression that it is China driven. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's it's a, it's an initiative which uh, you know blends perfectly with our own uh, vision of how uh, trade uh, should mm -hmm. be recreated along the ancient Silk Road. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, as a country, uh, are, as you know, are the, land, the largest land local country in the world. Yeah. And um, uh, we are perhaps the farthest away from, from any ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the geographic center of the Eurasian continent is uh, uh, several hundred kilometers to the east of Astana. Mm -hmm. So naturally, we want uh, better connections. We want better uh, transport logistics um, for us and for our products to reach the, the world. And uh, it was an unfortunate uh, situation uh, caused by, of course, the development of maritime mm -hmm. communications uh, in the 17th uh, century, mm -hmm. uh, which eventually led uh, to. Uh, there was one factor, of course. Uh, to the closure of this part of the world to the global trade routes. Uh, mm. uh, and for three centuries, as part of the Russian Empire and then the Soviet Union, mm. Kazakhstan and other countries in Central Asia were mm. uh, basically uh, sealed off mm. and blocked from uh, 
reaching out to the international community, uh, especially given that the situation in Afghanistan was, uh, especially in the 80s, in a very precarious state, and yes. uh, we were we didn't have an outlet to the south. Um, so uh, we fully support our war. Mm -hmm. One Belt, One Road, and our president went to this uh, forum, Belt and Road Initiative yeah. Forum in Beijing in mid-May. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As did many other countries, uh, but I, you're right, I, I don't think many European countries were represented there quite mm -hmm. at the highest levels, but uh, still, mm -hmm. they were there from uh, Hungary to Czech Republic, from what I recall to Latvia, to quite a few others. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, well, first of all, we understand that this is a, a, a long project. Uh, I was just reading up some, some papers about it, and it's basically a project uh, designed to last until at least 2050. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, there is a mobilization uh, process then from 2016 through, uh, no, until 2016 there was a mobilization. And from 2016 to 2021, uh, the planning, mm -hmm. and then the implementation from 2021 to 2049. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, uh, President Xi Jinping announced this uh, uh, one component of the uh, One Belt One Road, the Silkway Economic Silk Road Economic Belt, mm -hmm. here at the at the Nazarbayev University in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, so. It, it, it is in our interest to develop it. To uh, we have our own infrastructure development uh, program called Nurli Jol, mm -hmm. uh, which is translated as a Bright Path. Mm -hmm. It is being implemented since 2014, mm -hmm. and uh, under this initiative, Kazakhstan poured uh, nine billion dollars of our own state money and attracted uh, another 12 billion dollars in mm -hmm. uh, other financing to develop infrastructure within Kazakhstan um, and, and that, that's uh, already being implemented now and it's very uh, compatible mm -hmm. with the plans to build uh, mm -hmm. up the railways and the automobile roads yeah. infrastructure. So which Kazakhstan would see to it that also taking into consideration its own interests mm -hmm that uh, even though it is one country driven initiative well it does not ignore the interests of the no it, do, it doesn't and it, it cannot ignore I, I guess uh, uh, it and it will not be ignoring uh, because otherwise uh, the chances of its implementation will be less yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, solid so so to speak yeah. are there any plans uh, to have other countries join as full members the SEO? Uh, there are several countries which are in the uh, in various stages of um, uh, involvement. Mm -hmm. uh, there are three stages. Mm -hmm. uh, one is the uh, partner for dialogue. Then it's uh, mm -hmm. an observer, mm -hmm. and then it's a full member. Mm -hmm. um, and there are several countries which seek uh, to uh, stage two. Stage four. Four. Yes, one. Some countries want to move up from. Stage one to stage two. Others wants to sign, or uh, just to become partners for dialogue. Uh, for example, Syria at some point requested that, but Syria, of course, is a, is a very interesting, mm. to say the least, situation now. Yeah. Iran is an observer, okay, and as is Afghanistan. So they are close to. They are yes, but uh, yes, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, and there is a discussion about uh, Iran within the organization mm -hmm. about uh, because of Tajikistan whether or not to yes yeah. accept um, mm -hmm. Iran. Uh, uh, so I guess this is this is uh, uh, some matter for the coming months uh, mm -hmm. and years for this organization yeah. to decide further. Yeah. I think it will be interesting to see how the expansion of the Shanghai Cooperation Region now uh, proceeds. Mm -hmm. Is there a limit in the statutes of the organization? In terms How of many countries can no. become members? No. no, no. Eurasia, that's the main objective. Or can be out, outside of Eurasia? Well, I have to check the charter, okay. but I don't think there is any limit. Uh, so some people say that uh, it is uh, a hidden attempt to substitute the NATO. Um, as I said to you, uh, just 
a, a few minutes ago. Uh, it's important to uh, understand what the Shanghai Cooperation Organization is about. And it is about security, but it's not a military alliance. Mm, yeah. It, it uh, hosts um, joint anti-terrorism exercises, drill, drills, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, but they're not huge military mm. uh, exercises. Yeah. There is a structure within the Shanghai Cooperation Organization that's called uh, Regional Anti-Terrorism Structure, mm -hmm. uh, RATS. Mm -hmm. It is based in Tashkent, I see. In, in Uzbekistan, mm -hmm. and it helps coordinate um, activities of law enforcement agencies of all SCO member states in fighting terrorism. And uh, during the years of its existence, it has uh, been able to provide such interaction, mm -hmm. which resulted in uh, very positive uh, mm -hmm. cooperation and in the uh, capture of uh, uh, actually hundreds of uh, people who uh, were either involved in terrorist attacks or, or planning terrorist attacks. Oh, and their terrorist attacks were foiled yeah. in yeah. SCO member states. Yeah. So it's not, it's not a phony structure, it's a real yeah. uh, communication center. Yeah. No, last question because my colleague is waiting. Um, would one say that you are very happy with the, the summit uh, as it uh, went on? Of course, yeah. yes. Complete uh, success? Yes, we would think so. It's, it was a historic uh, summit and yeah. uh, uh, in Astana basically the organization expanded and uh, now yeah. it includes eight members. Um, but again, I would uh, say that uh, uh, it is important now to uh, see the, uh, the process of uh, Indian Pakistan joining the organization mm -hmm. through smoothly mm -hmm. so that uh, its interactions are only uh, uh, enhanced mm -hmm. by the new two new members. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. So when do you Thank expect you. the first nuclear power plant to, to be ready? Uh, it, I think it will take uh, several years to be built mm -hmm. after uh, the decision is made, made okay. four or five years. Mm -hmm. And so far the decision has not been made on, on okay. where uh, there are several locations that the government is looking at, mm. but uh, 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 several options, but uh, there is no firm decision yet as to mm. when and how we will begin and with whom we will begin building uh, mm. the, power plant, uh, um, the power plant. And it's done one, one under the supervision of the IEA. No? Of course. Yeah. You know, in um, uh, Kazakhstan, um, we will have what is called the Low Enriched Uranium Bank. Mm. Yeah. Under the IEA auspices, yeah. which will be launched on uh, August 29. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of you will be able to, to, to join us here for the launch. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be um, also uh, the day, of course, which we commemorate every year and throughout the world now it's commemorated as the UN International Day Against Nuclear Testing. Mm -hmm. And we expect to have uh, Director General uh, Yukia Amano of, yeah. uh, of the IEA. IEA here for the launch of this LEU bank. It will be again located at the um, Uba Metallurgical Plant in ust Kaminagorsk, which is in the east of Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of consideration went in terms of, uh, went into studying mm -hmm. se seismic uh, activities of the region. Uh, so uh, this will be done in a very sustainable way and um, you were asking some, something about the earthquakes, etc. Of course, this will be one factor which will be also closely considered when the decisions are made to, to build uh, nuclear power plants. There are regions in Kazakhstan which uh, have never had an earthquake, such as here in Astana, mm -hmm. because we are on a plateau. On a plateau. Mm -hmm. But Almaty has that, no? No, that's why it's not going to be built in Almaty, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> in the mountains. Yeah.